everyone, and welcome to Keeping It Real with Steph and Kev. I'm Steph. And I'm Kev, and we're keeping it real. This is show number three. And the title of this show is Passionate Jobs. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of going after your passions, not only in your everyday life, but also in your long-term goals as far as careers and jobs are concerned. Exactly, but before we get into that, we would like to read our quote that basically defines the premise of our show. So, right. Steph? All right. When I was young and free and my imagination had no limits, I dreamed of changing the world. As I grew older and wiser, I realized the world would not change, and I decided to shorten my sight somewhat and change only my country, but it too seemed immovable. As I entered my twilight years in one last desperate attempt, I sought to change not only my family, those closest to me, but alas, they would have none of it. And now here I lie on my deathbed and realize, perhaps for the first time, that if only I changed myself first, then by example, I may have influenced my family, and with their encouragement and support, I may have bettered my country, and who knows, I may have changed the world. Change the world. That's right. That's true. Um, I think, you know, from where I was at, uh, even take about, uh, I'd say, two years ago, mm -hmm. I was working full-time. It was my junior year, so I was working full-time, going to school full-time. I started last summer with working three jobs, 80-hour weeks. Mm -hmm. I was putting money um, and work ahead of everything in my life. I lost connection with my family, my faith, my yeah. friends. Yeah. Um, I guess you could basically say that I was shake, shake, shaking my money maker. <laughs> And you know, I I was uh, you know I was just like putting ahead of everything in my life. So I was like, it was my only motivation, right, you know. Right. And, and and we're not saying that money's not important. It it is. It's it's you know. I mean, it's what makes the world go round. It's, right. it's what you know makes this university run and right. et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, if it's your only motivation, that's where we have the biggest problem. I mean, if right. if you know, getting up every day, and this is your only motivation, you know. <laughs> oh jeez. Then, then we have a problem. Right, right. <laughs> so, in so we're not necessarily um, talking about you know discarding of all of our monetary values and all of our monetary needs right. because we do need money. It's you know a basic fact of life. However, if that wallet is so attached to you, if the things that your money can buy are so dear to you, closer than exactly. family, closer than friends, closer than other things that are important above materialistic right. things, then we do have a problem and we do need to chuck that wall. Exactly, because it's, I mean, money, you know, it can buy happiness, but only temporary happiness, right. you know, at, at least in my eyes. So right. I, th I think, you know, one of the first things we need to do when we're trying to pursue our passionate jobs is to be willing to accept the unknown. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you want to touch on that a little more right. stuff. Yeah, well, going into our futures, we need to be certain that we keep an open mind to any possibilities that may come and we cannot be open to these possibilities unless we have the intent within ourselves right. to be ready for anything exactly. to take these opportunities as they come to us rather than worrying about the consequences exactly. of well if i do this maybe this won't come to me or i shouldn't partake in this because you know it might not work out 10 years down right. the road it might not get me that six-figure exactly. salary that i want right now you or know, in I, two years I, I think the biggest thing on that is that we really need to um follow you know our hearts almost and just right. you know to take that risk and have the courage right. to you know go courage. into like something that you know we may not be totally sure about but, but it's something that really moves us uh kind of like this quote by howard thurman right right stuff's gonna read that to you right don't ask yourself what the world needs rather ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go and do that because what the world really needs is more people who have come alive. That's so true. Uh, it it kind of goes powerful. back to this um, story about a fisherman oh, and right. an American investment banker. Right. Why so, don't you tell that story? I will. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, there was a, an American in investment banker and he was down in a small coastal village in Mexico. Okay. And this fisherman comes up to the dock and he and he goes up to the dock and he has like these big fish in his boat. Okay. And so the American investment the American banker's like, you know, that's a great catch. You know, right. um, how long did it take you to, to, you know, get these fish? He's like, well, only uh, um, a little while, like an hour. Mm -hmm. And so then the banker's like, well, okay, why didn't you, um, you know, catch more fish? Okay. He's like, well, I have more than enough to fulfill my family's needs. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, okay, you know, that, that's great, but you know, you can make so much more money. I have a MBA from U of M and mm -hmm. I can help you with this. You know, you can go on and like, uh, 
you know, fish uh, a couple more hours a day, you know, buy, right. buy a bigger boat. And then from there, you can get some more boats, get your own employees, have a cannery, get an enterprise, <laughs> finally go to Mexico City, New York, LA, you can make millions. Okay? Right, right. And he's like, okay, how, but how long will that take? He's like 15 to 20 years. He's like, okay, but then what? <laughs> well, you know, um, then he's going to be, I, I mean, like, I think he's going to go back to his same lifestyle. Right, exactly. Right? So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it was just kind of uh, ironic, I guess, that, you know, he started off, um, you know, like with this, cer so where, where, like he thought that, you know, getting all this money, right. he was going to um, fulfill his life when he really had, his, had, had a right in mind that right. with his family and with his current relationships, you know. So he basically had the perfect life. Right. And the investment baker wanted to make his life right, more exactly. perfect through monetary means just right. so that he could go back to this perfect life of fishing. Exactly. Well, when hanging he retires he's family. gonna go back, you know, and, and then be able to go to a small coastal Mexican village right. and fish all day and sip some wine with his friends <laughs> in the in the town and play play the play the guitar. So All right. Yeah. That's a great story to lead us into our um, next guest. And coming up after the commercial we're going to speak with an experienced career counselor who gives his take on the one thing that really matters when you are searching for a career. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right. Stay tuned. last week and now I'm gonna be so behind. Um still missing the problem here. What do you mean? We're talking about Grey's here, the most watched television show. Okay, well I get that, but what I don't get is why you don't just watch the entertainment buzz on Wolf TV. They have recaps of all of today's most popular television shows, plus you can get previews of upcoming movies and find out what's hot in Hollywood. I mean there's no reason not to watch. That show's the coolest. They interview the rock on that show. That's awesome. I'm gonna go catch a spit. Man, guys, I wonder who this week's short shot's gonna be. We're gonna go watch the entertainment buzz right now. I'm with them. Gotta go catch Grace. I guess everyone's going to catch the entertainment buzz only on Wolf TV. Hello everyone and welcome back to Keeping It Real with Steph and Kev. I'm Steph. And I'm Kev and we're keeping it real with Mr. Stuart Baker. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Baker Thank you for here. having we me. Appreciate that. So we Thanks. have with us today Mr. Baker. He's a college counselor mm -hmm. and we want to um, guys get his take on what he thinks about passionate jobs. So before the show, uh, both him and I were talking that you know he has students that come into his classroom uh, every day more or less, and they sit down with them and they say to them that they want to make six what figures. The heck? Yeah. Six how the figures. Heck do I do right this? when I get out of college, I don't care if I hate doing it. Just tell me how to make a hundred thousand dollars. Right. So let's, I guess, kind of invert the roles here. So I would be a student. So I walk into your classroom. Okay. Or my office. Let's just pretend that happens, and I say, <laughs> "Hello, Mr. Baker. It's it's a pleasure. <laughs> Good Always to see you, Kevin. Thanks now, for coming. Now let's move on to business. Okay. You know, yep. I'm a student here, and I want to make six figures when I get out of college. I don't care. If I hate it, tell me how, it, how, how to do it. Just, just tell me. Well, obviously, that's not the main criteria for choosing a career to, that will fulfill passions, right? Okay. okay. Um, I'm listening. <laughs> sometimes I, I see students who have known what they want to be, you know, since they were 14, um, right. when what they wanted to be in life. But that's an ex really an exception. Right. That's true. Uh, that's true. Most students I talk to, they, I ask them if they, sometimes they lay awake at night thinking about this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and they said, how'd you know that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And I students do. Yeah, well, I because, <laughs> you know, they're thinking about it. They don't know. They're asking themselves questions and not getting any answers. Right. right. 
And the reason is because they don't have enough information. Mm -hmm. exactly. They don't have enough information about themselves, and they don't have enough information about what's out there That's and where there's going to be a match where they can match their interests and their goals mm -hmm. with those passions. Mm -hmm. right. And also, there's all these <coughs> outside forces. I mean, do they come into your office and tell you, you know, I have this person telling me that right. I should go into this. I have this person saying, oh, it would be great if you followed my path into this. Do you right. run into yeah. that a like lot? Like their parents or their aunts or the reason The right. reason they're, they're saying those things to you is because they care about you, first of all, mm -hmm. yeah. and something worked right. great exactly. for them. And so they're thinking, well, if it worked great for me, it's probably going to work great for you, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, the first thought comes to mind is, wait a minute, who told them what was going to work great for them? Right. You know. Who That's told true. the parents? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you know. That's true. We want you to be thinking about this yourself and and uh, collecting information. That's our job to help you get those resources so that you can make those decisions for yourself and not being relying on other other people okay. who are trying to tell yeah, you what true. to do. So let's kind of maybe turn this into a different scenario so I I like tell you okay so I decide to you know go after not my passions you know something that I'm not passionate about but I'm going after the money yep. and I decide to pursue this career what what's wrong with that I, mean, I would say what could happen that chances are what would happen is because you went after something that you didn't you weren't utilizing your gifts and talents you right. were actually just going okay. after something that would okay. pay big bucks mm -hmm. that you might not be doing it very well and when you're not doing it well then people are going to notice and who knows? You might jeopardize your success in the sense that they might fire you. Right. Okay. You know. Okay. And it's true that you use your gifts and talents that you are most passionate about because that's why you're good at them. Absolutely. Is, I mean, it's not all natural ability here. Yeah. No. Right. right. Okay. That's great. So you work on those. You you take those gifts and you obviously you go to school. Right. You you know mm -hmm. you're doing your getting your degree, focusing okay. on yeah. a career. That's, that's so what's true. the number one thing you tell students when they come into your what they should office? focus on when they're pursuing their future well, job. I think that um, you have to be listening to that inner voice, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes students will say, well, you know, I'll ask them, I'll say, what do you love to do? And right. um, they'll say, well, I love to do this, but I'm going to pursue this over here as a career. I said, why would you turn your back on something that you know you <laughs> right. love to do? Right. And we have to be careful because sometimes if you pursue something you love to do as a career, it becomes a job and it's no right. longer fun. Right, 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 yeah. But that doesn't always happen. I mean, it's I think like that, that one saying, uh, Find something that you love to do, and you'll never work a day in your life. Absolutely. Sort of thing like yeah. That. Yeah. 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 Find something that's not work. Yeah. And something do that it. you would do for free, probably. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, I think that you know, it's just a matter of uh, once you you know do that homework, do some of the research because right. in higher education we do have the tools. Mm -hmm. right. We have assessment instruments that are helpful for students. Interest inventories, skills assessments, personality inventories. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we begin building a profile about people. Right. They learn more about themselves and take that information and then access database research, mm -hmm. not Googling, but right. <laughs> subscription databases that we pay right. for right. and um, try to match those interests with what's out there, you yeah. know, where there's going to be a connection. Mm -hmm. Now, Kevin, I have this um, philosophy we kind of go by, <laughs> and do you, tell us if you agree with this, do you right. believe that if everyone out there were to pursue his or her own passions, focus on their career that makes them feel most like they're coming alive, Absolutely. that they feel most in tune to, that they mm -hmm. are deciding to do, and not you know, worrying about what everyone else is right. trying to being, get them to do. Being who they want to be. Being who they want to be. Right. Do you believe that we could collectively solve many of world's is the world's issues that... Well, I think so because it's right. a matter of, you know, collecting those talents and abilities, right? And right. sort of mm -hmm. marshalling them, but obviously allow people to, people to pursue careers where they can maximize their potential. Right. right. And certainly, uh, collectively, yeah, have more, more uh, success solving those more issues. Impact. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. All right, and in order, just once again to bring us back to the beginning, in order to actually find our passions, we need to first quiet down, focus on how we feel on the exactly. inside, focus on what makes us come alive most, focus on, you know, that voice as we're laying in bed at night, <laughs> not being able to sleep, what, right, are right. We, what are we thinking about in there? You know, we need to really um, kind of hone in on this and exactly. then apply it to our yeah. everyday lives when we're up and out of bed. Yep. You know, and just mm -hmm. and go taking the that. steps to to uh, to answer those questions that you're asking right. yourself, mm -hmm. not just ask because every day you'd ask yourself the same question, you'd get the same answer, nothing, right. you know. Right. No, oh, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, do you have any other tips for <laughs> all our students out there the struggling with finding their passions or careers no. or? Well, I think it's money? it's a challenge certainly, and um, 
one of the things we need to do is what complicates it sometimes is, is to look at life in chunks mm -hmm. because sometimes um, what matters when you're between the ages of 18 and 22 mm -hmm. may not be the same at 25 or later on in life so you know you have to make your right, best judgment at the moment in time with the homework that you've done right. on right. and the research on the on the careers okay, okay. now right. I think just you know one more point to even tack onto this is that I think still there's a lot of people that might have that um, worry that okay I still okay so I decided to take that risk and pursue my passions mm -hmm. um, what about the money you know I mean you know is it is it gonna come I mean is it you know I mean I, th I think it's just a question that's burning in everyone's mind that yes I want to do something that I love but is it gonna pay you know right. I mean what will happen if I do decide to take that risk here's here's what I would say about that if you choose a, a career path that you love right you're probably gonna be good at it because you are using your natural abilities and you'll be, be performing quality work, quality service, mm -hmm. and guess what? The money will come because someone, quit, right? so, someone right. will be willing to pay you for, those, for those great results. Right. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is a great point. So follow your passions. Right. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> you very it. much for being here with us. Yeah, thank you. So much for, thank yeah, you very much for having it. me. I enjoyed it. Yes. Passionate thank jobs. Because okay. this, is, this is a man right here that is very passionate about his job. I love what I do. That's right. So he does. Great. Impacting some lives. So, All day. right, well, up next, we have a young teacher who is pursuing her passions. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Yes, hello? Hi. Um, what does the G-spot even stand for? Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? Welcome back to Keeping It Real with Steph and Kev. I'm Steph. And I'm Kevin. We're keeping it real. And today we have a special guest. Her name is Catherine. She's studying to be an elementary school teacher. And um, she just accepted a position with Teach for America in Chicago. So welcome, Catherine. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you. I'm Thank excited you to be here. here. Thanks so Thanks. much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, first, we'd like to talk to you about um, what... What made you want to go into the um, elementary education program, and why exactly right. do you want what to was teach? Always motivation, more or mm -hmm. less. Yeah. Well, you know, like a lot of um, freshmen that come to U of M, I was really wanted to come to a really great university, and um, right. I was really searching for a job that would help me um, really succeed and right. really yeah, be big in the world. Right. And um, the more I looked and looked, I just had a hard time finding something that felt right for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I had always kind of wanted to be a teacher when I was younger. Right. Um, and so you're listening to that inner voice, like <laughs> yes, Mr. Baker would yes. say. Follow your heart. Okay. Right. And, um, <laughs> right. and I really, um, I would always work really hard to get good grades and right. you know you work for that A and when you get it it feels pretty good but um, I also have um, had taught swimming lessons um, in the right. summers and just when I would work really hard with a student and try to get them to to work on their swimming it would feel really good when I would actually have when they would actually succeed right. and right, really um, and you knew get that what you I helped would, them yeah right. achieve that goal that yeah. I was trying to have them get mm -hmm. and it was just so much more fulfilling than getting that A and oh, okay. um, it was just a really different feeling it made me realize that I really right. liked teaching and working toward helping others right. um, yeah, achieve great. their goals right wow um, good so um, now you're working you're, you're going to be working um, with lower income 
children mm -hmm. and how did you decide that you wanted to work with them as opposed to just some average school with people yeah. who maybe are not suffering from you know problems every right. day mm -hmm. that's a good question well I um, as part of the elementary education program here you um, work in different schools just to get experience okay. with different grade levels and different schools and I was placed in a lower income school in the area okay. and I just realized that something was different at this school mm -hmm. and I just realized how unfair it was that these schools had so much less than some of the other schools right. I was in right. just in terms of supplies and um, other resources and um, I just felt a drive to at least donate a little bit of time to try yeah. to help the, the plate that is in these schools. Right. And so I, I know it'll be a big challenge and I don't even know what to expect, but right. Um, right. I, I want to start out there and see where, see That's where kind of life part goes of the, from um, there. Right. Excitement though, isn't right. it? Right, you know, yeah, the like excitement kind of, of like the, the unknown, unknown kind of. But yeah. I, I think yeah. even as uh, Mr. Baker was talking about that we need to explore our options and so I think that you taking that first first step and having, having the, courage the courage to do that right. is, is amazing. And I, I'm just taking a wild guess here, but I'm assuming <laughs> that you are not kind of pursuing this this career path for just solely for the money. Is that correct? No, I mean generally when people decide to become a teacher, it's not usually <laughs> because of right. money. Right. But, um, <laughs> and, and that was one struggle for me. I feel like I had always felt the pressure to become a lawyer right. or a doctor or oh, something yeah. else. Mm -hmm. And because um, your mother, your father's a lawyer. Yeah. We, we right. Okay. That before the show. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, he didn't really put pressure on me, but but just just in general, I right. I don't know. I guess. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Um, being at U of M and things like that, but mm -hmm. um. But I think I'll be a lot happier if yeah. I right. choose to do this, and I'm sure you know. I know a teaching degree will exactly. still give me enough money to to get by. To get by. So. And I I think even more more than that, it's something that's priceless for the soul. Like, True. You know, when it comes True. down to it, that yeah. you know, I mean, people ask, you know, oh, can you make a living off that, or can you make enough money doing that? But if it's something that what's a living. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a great question. What's a living? Is it having <laughs> the money explode from your pockets, or is it going home after you know a nine-hour day working with these lower-income children and actually you know seeing that light bulb or seeing them oh, wow. you know go from a C to an A, you yeah. know? And that's exactly what Catherine's been talking about. Stuff's keeping it real. Just keeping <laughs> <Yeah>. it real. <laughs> All right. Well, up next, we're going to meet another future leader pursuing his passions and trying to make a difference. And Catherine, thank you thank very you so much, much for coming. Thank you so much. And good, good luck with everything. everything. Thank you. <laughs> Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. We'll be right back. Anatomy last week, and now I'm going to be so behind. Um, still missing the problem here. What do you mean? We're talking about Grey's here, the most watched television show. Okay, well, I get that, but what I don't get is why you don't just watch the entertainment buzz on Wolf TV. They have recaps of all of today's most popular television shows, plus, you can get previews of upcoming movies and find out what's hot in Hollywood. I mean, there's no reason not to watch. That show's the coolest. They interview The Rock on that show. That's awesome. I'm gonna go catch the spit. Man, guys, I wonder who this week's short shot's gonna be. We're gonna go watch the entertainment buzz right now. I'm with them. Gotta go catch Grace. I guess everyone's going to catch the entertainment buzz only on Wolf TV. And welcome back to Keeping It Real with Steph and Kev. I'm Steph. And I'm Kev, and we're keeping it real this time with ours truly, Alex Cater. <laughs> he is a business student, 
Thanks for being with us, Alex. Thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. (laughs) Thank you. Appreciate having me. So we have Alex here today, and I think our first question as we talk to our other guests, you know, as our show is about passionate jobs, Mm -hmm. that we just would like to know, I mean, sort of like what your passions are in terms of what you're trying to pursue for your career and and your future, and, um, you know, like what's, I guess, your motivation behind, you know, going towards the The business business side. Yeah, the business world. Well, uh, my ultimate goal is to... um, ultimately be an entrepreneur okay and the way I came about that was because my mom had her own store in Chicago okay. for 10 years and she was very determined very competitive person right, right. <laughs> and like g- most business <laughs> school students <laughs> like very no offense, Alex. Thought, we need like, people like that though exactly Go like ahead. most <laughs> very much like most and uh, yeah I guess that some of that did rub off on me <laughs> 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 hence the reason why I'm here right. Um, right. but um but um, I th- I, the, what pushes me is that um, ultimately is to make that, um, to be something established myself, but also to have that externality and to um, make a change with others and in the right. community. That's okay. And I think that um, businesses can play a huge mm-hmm. role in doing that. Right. Right. I mean, look at the millions of dollars oh, businesses they, they donate, donate everywhere. Every, exactly. And not, I mean, we're saying money doesn't solve problems, but <clears throat> to a certain degree, I mean, right. these companies... It can help out yeah. immensely, you know, yeah. for certain problems that going on in the world right now. So right. I think, and I, you know, I was talking with you bef- uh, before the show started that you, it seems like you're very involved in extracurriculars. And I, I mean, if you want to maybe just touch on how you know, you're trying to explore these options as our other guests have been doing as well mm-hmm. um, in terms of, you know, trying to ha- see, how, see how it fits into, like, your purpose and, like, what, what really moves you and makes you come alive. Well, sure. I think that um, I'm involved with um, fraternity on campus, Phi okay. Delta Theta, okay. and also um, business un- Black Business Undergraduate Society and also Black Student Union. Right. And uh, th- um, the things um, with those organizations, one's uh, oriented towards the career side, but also it reaches out and um, pulls in people who are interested in business, right. interested in taking that path, mm-hmm. and actually gives them some sort of a uh, support group That's and great. some sort of direction in trying to make those goals and right. um, and the steps in order to, even if you're not in the business school, how you're able to okay. be wow. able to fulfill those goals. Right. Okay. And um, with Black Student Union, a lot of the things that um, we do there is um, collaborate with a lot of different organizations on campus in order exactly, to make a better yeah. campus ca- climate okay. for all different. Right. So that's how you'll t- eventually take your entrepreneurship goals and you know do what you're try doing. Try to create like a vision almost like for your business. Hopefully, that's going to try to you know reach some of these um, goals that are you know outlined in your current organizations. Exactly. Your, and a here. burning question I have, real quick, here, Alex. <laughs> okay. I know business school. You know, I know the reputation. Are you right. surrounded by those people who are just after the money, like right. Mr. Baker said, who are just coming in and asking, you know, Very what do I do to make the six figures? You're surrounded by that a lot, aren't you? I think that in anything that you do, you have some people that are dedicated True. towards that. Okay. Right. right. All right. At Fair the enough. same time, I think that there are a lot of people who are actually passionate in what they do. Right. Right. Um, so I think that that um, I think that you will find a lot of people who are actually. Yeah. Um, actually push towards actually finding that goal. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's not always just about the money. Right. So exactly. it doesn't negatively affect no, you. It, yeah. it, in fact, it gives you maybe more wider perspective on right. people's different goals and their passions. Right. And I, I found that so refreshing, you know, to like when, when, when I was uh, speaking with you that, you know, you're mm-hmm. just, you know, really trying to pursue your own own passions and trying to follow your heart, you know, right. which is very respectful. Re- respectable yeah. so <laughs> well thank, thank you. you very much for being with us today and just to um, kind of wrap up our passionate jobs today um, if we're changing ourselves first like right. the premise of our show like the quote says if yeah. we are being who we want to be if we're going after our passions Definitely. then this essentially is how we will change the world because the change from within will spread to the change to the person right, next us. to us exactly. right and will just essentially really change it's the world snowball, right right and i guess uh, a certain phrase that alex always says uh which i guess in terms of being the change within alex that's what's up that's what's up that's what's up that, that's what's up so you know, all right i th- i think at this point we need to re you know think about what we talked about here today you right. know kind of maybe think about where you're at your lives you know i mean right. 
you know, I, I mean, it's time to be the change, everyone. You know, it's time to step it up. It's time to say, you know, who am I? What, what, what am I passionate about? What, what makes me come alive? Right, okay? dig deep. It's time to say that we need to be passionate, be the change. Let's just do it. Let's, let's, let's go and make the change. Let's do it. All right, exactly. email real. us at wolf.real <laughs> at umich.edu. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. Stay tuned. Oh, good. <laughs> that fisherman there is